segment leadership wisdom series part two we took last part one last month leadership wisdom spirit uh, sorry series leadership wisdom series part two Now let's start with uh, Joshua chapter 13 and verse 1. Let's have it on screen. Joshua chapter 13 and verse 1. Ignatius Tony Awudu is watching live online all the way from Abuja. You're welcome on board. I'm waiting for Dick Into to be online. Let's read together, everybody. Can we be on our feet in honor of God's word? After the count of three, one, two, and three. Let's go. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. I didn't hear you. I only had myself. One, two, and let's go again. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. Father, we ask for word from your throne to sharpen our spirit for more impact in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Let's be seated. Now, when, I, when that scripture struck, struck my heart, struck my heart, seriously, you know, uh, I began to meditate. You know, it's a leadership wisdom, uh, leadership wisdom series. That how can somebody get to a point in his life where his thinking is rounding up? They now begin to tell him that the assignment you have not done is very plenty. You know, when somebody's thinking, I've done well, I'm closing up for the day, you know, you're closing up for the day, and your boss is coming to tell you that, ah, uh -uh, you have not done your assignment, finish. You've not finished your assignment. Now, Joshua was old, which means he, no, he has gotten to a point in his life where he no longer had strength to do anything. And I believe maybe he was reporting to God that, Father, I thank you for my life, you know, maybe he was, thank you for my journey so far. God now said, Joshua, Joshua, you think you are rounding up? Yes, you are old, but I want you to know that there are several lands that was allocated that you should be the one to capture that you have not done. So I began to meditate. Now that's why today in my leadership series for you is to ask you and to also let you know that, you know, Whatever you think you have done, hey, I want you to know that there is a portion of work that God Almighty has programmed for you. And we shall either be judged or justified by it. So if you are thinking that, well, I've done well, it's time for me to relax. Have you really done well? And we are going to see reasons why it is so in today's leadership series you know this joshua's life has really taught me a big lesson that's why you know i've always told you you don't measure your success by other people's failure and you don't measure your success by your level of strength you measure your success in leadership by the voice of god father have i done well now, I wrote down in my notes, the easiest part of leadership is laboring to get into the position of leadership. Now, let me come again. The easiest part of leadership is laboring to get into the office slash position of leadership. Now, which means that no matter what you have done to get into leadership, it's a piece of bread compared to what it 
takes to remain in leadership. Because you know, I have done so much. The easiest part of leadership is to labor to become a leader. That praise God, I'm now a reverend. Praise God, I'm now an evangelist. Praise God, now they have made me head of choir. Praise God, now they have made me head of ushering. Praise God, I'm now the head of this. That's the easiest part of leadership. What you need to do to stay in leadership is far beyond what you did to get into it. I'm still coming back to Joshua. Now, that's why today, hear me, I have some things I want to read out for you to see. What a lot of leaders hold on to is nothing but title. The titles they are given. But beloved, it is not title that makes you a leader. It's not a title that makes you a leader. It is your relevance. What are you doing part-time? What are you doing part-time? That's what makes you a leader. Now, and if what you are doing is does not bring impact in any way, forget it. You are just occupying the ground. You are not productive. I saw in Matthew chapter 10 from verse 2. You know, I was just studying the word and I saw the names of the 12 disciples of Jesus being written. Do you know that when I read it, I discovered two names that I, I had for the very first time in that verse. Now, apart from the day they were brought into leadership, nothing significant was said concerning them. Let's look at the, that, that scripture. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 2. From verse 2. Matthew chapter 10 from verse 2. Now, two names I never had. I was hearing them for the first time. Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. The first, Simeon, who is called Peter. Do you know him? Aha, I know him too. Simeon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. Do you know Andrew? Yes, I know him too. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. You know those two men. They call them the sons of thunder. Very powerful men. Now, let, let's move on. Let's move on. We'll stop at verse 5. Now, verse 3. Philip. You know Philip? Philip is the man that entered Samaria. And the whole of Samaria except Jesus. The Bible said there was joy in the city. Matthew the publican. You know Matthew? That's the man that wrote the book of Matthew. James, the son of Alhos. Now, we didn't hear much about him. But look at this one. And Le, 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 Baos. Le Baos, whose surname was Tadios. Did you hear anything about Le Baos? Now, apart from his name being mentioned here, did you hear, did you, anywhere in the scriptures, did you hear his name? Now, that's one. Verse 4. Then talks about Simeon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot. We all know Judas. But we didn't hear anything about Simeon the Canaanite. Now, but don't forget, they all were ordained into leadership the same day. They all were ordained. They all were given title of who? Apostles. The same day. They all were called Apostle La What's that name again? Lebaos. Apostle Lebaos. Apostle Lebaos. Apostle Simeon, Simeon the, 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 the Canaanite. Now, they all received the title. That was, that's the easiest part of leadership. But do you know that after today, with, after that day they were ordained into the office of an apostle, we didn't hear anything about them again. Now, hear me. I wrote this down and I want you to take notice. Appointment into leadership is a calling for continuous impact. Appointment into leadership is a calling for continuous impact. Now, it is not a calling to retirement. It is not a calling to go and relax. Now, the moment you are called into leadership, Chiwamba Chifiesinu Ikwa Dari, 
e mo nkan ton pe ni pe adari ni to ba fi yin si po yen ori ofe e e e e won 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 pe yin si se to ju e te n se ke to debe lo ni but most people once they get into the position of leadership we don't we don't hear anything about them again until they fade away we are going somewhere please follow me imagine how we did not hear anything again even from the 70 men that received the spirit of Moses into the body bearer ministry with Moses. I want to be true with all the scriptures if I begin to teach you deep. Numbers chapter 11. Look at 16 and 17. Numbers 11, 16 and 17. 70 men. The Bible says the spirit of Moses was placed into them. Now, and they were called into this assignment of becoming burden sharers with Moses and the Lord said unto Moses gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with who with you as your assistants verse 17 so that they will stand there with you and I will come down and talk with thee there and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone. But look up. After these people received the spirit of Moses, did you hear anything about them again? No. It is not your position. It is not your title. It is not your office that makes you relevant. It is what you do with that position. Now, have you not heard that some wives will call their husband She Okodeleni Sha? Now, which means that the man is only husband the day he got married, but not husband in any way when it comes to being a responsible husband. We are going somewhere. A woman delivered and her mother came to stay with to watch over her as she saw her mom coming she she stood up went to the balcony and told everybody tell this woman if she enter here with disgrace her i don't want to see her her load that people carried inside her, her, her badge she fl she started flinging it from the corridor that this woman left me when i was six months old now that God has blessed me, now that I've given back to a child, she's now coming to say she wants to nurse my own child. Did she nurse me? Is she a mother? So she was only a mother by birth, but not a mother by responsibility. What makes you a successful and a, a, a good leader is when you carry the responsibility that your office demands. what makes a leader a leader is not his title what makes a man a man is not his manhood what makes a leader a leader is his ability to carry his responsibility are you doing your work now we are going somewhere we are going somewhere i've been branching to a lot of places Because I see that so many of us, we, stick, we, are, we are only tied to bearing leaders in our church. I was having a meeting two days ago or three days ago that I'll have a meeting with all our leaders. And I will ask you, which department do you belong? You know, you can be a leader in church and think you are up there, you are like Joshua. It is at your old age, if care is not taken, that God will tell you you didn't do anything. May you not be like Joshua. That which department do you belong? Is it that you wake up in the morning, you just dress up and come to church and still sit down in church and after service you carry your Bible and go and you say you are a leader? You are not a leader. You are just a leader by title. You become a leader by what? Your responsibility. Maybe I'm a little bit too hard. Okay. I was asking some people, who am I to you? And one of them said, 
you are you and mommy and mama are our parents in the lord so i try to push further how have we become your parents now they were now telling us what we have done you don't deserve a title that you didn't you are not laboring to keep okay moriko you ain't change your team my bin it's the truth the 70 disappeared we didn't hear of labaos and simeon why because they were not relevant in any way let's now answer the question things that makes people relevant in leadership let's look at the things that make people relevant in leadership what will make you relevant as a leader number one let's talk about continuous growth <laughs> hear me if you are not growing in your walk with god there is no how you will not be outdated if you are not growing you will you will plateau one of the reasons why so many leaders will no longer be relevant is when they cease to grow when they cease to to bakima dagbasi ninu emi oh ni relevant more at least i know of people that used to be on the top in our church before nobody relegated you nobody drove you to the backyard but the reason why you were just going back, you were going back, you were going back, everybody was going forward, everybody was going forward, is because you were not growing. And since you were not growing, you could not meet up. I can tell you the truth. There are so many, so many of us in various departments that may not be relevant again in our church in the next five years. That you will just be telling people at the background, I was there. I was there five years ago. I was there ten years ago. In fact, in 10 years ago, you know, in, in this place, I was, a, I, was a, I was in charge of so and so department. Something happened in Acts of the Apostles chapter 11. Look up. The Bible says, and the disciples, the apostles, they called for Peter. They said, you are backslide. You are backslide. They didn't know that Peter had grown beyond them. You are backslide. He said, why do you say I'm backslide? Some people came to tell us that we, they saw you in the house of a Gentile. His name is Colinus. You were eating with them. We saw you eating there. You are backslide. So everybody started moving away from Peter. Ha. Peter now smiled. They didn't know that they were the ones that were not growing. Peter now said, I also thought like that. In Acts chapter 10. I was in the house of a man called Simon the Turner. He was preparing food for me around 12 o'clock. Then I was praying to wait for the meal. While I was praying, a trance was brought to me. And I saw different kind of animals, unclean animals. And I heard the voice of God. You know I knew. He was telling them, you know I understand the voice of God. I was hearing the voice of God saying, kill and eat. And I said, no, I don't, I don't touch anything that is unclean. I don't touch anything that is unclean. And the voice said, don't call what I've called clean, unclean. He said, what this, this vision was going on? He said, I heard the voice of God. Some men are looking for you. Follow them. And the thing was removed, and they knocked my door. These men came. They were from Colinius, the Gentile. And according to the voice I had, I followed them. And when I got there, I was preaching, still busy preaching the gospel of John the Baptist to them. When they received the Holy Ghost, they started speaking in tongues. And I said to myself, if God could give Gentiles the gift of tongue speaking, what stops me from baptizing them? Do you know what happened? All of them started saying, ah, we didn't know. We didn't know. Why? Because Peter had grown. If you are not growing, hear me, you will fizzle out. Oh, my two level, come on. Oh, my, I mean, oh, my two stage, you come. Oh, nearly 15 with the assignment. That's why a leader, if there's anything a leader should be doing, a leader should be growing. Don't stop growing. Now, okay, look at those of our people in technical department. Thank God for Brother Trinity, ever current. I celebrate you. 
You know, there's going to be a time that we are going to bring in some digital gadgets. It will not be, oh yeah, it's C9. It is okay. It won't be those kind of equipment. It will be equipment that if you don't come like one hour to service to set, start, to set, we may not have quality sound. You know, if you don't grow to that point and you still want to be coming when praise and worship have started, we now go and on the engine. What do you think will happen? I didn't hear you now. Eh? Answer me. If we get to a point, we will not be able to cope with you again. We will now say, see, can we just employ some professionals that we will pay salaries to? Since these volunteers cannot make themselves available, am I communicating? You have to grow. Let me tap your neighbor. You have to grow. Now, I wrote some things down. Follow me. Follow me. I told you I'm going to be a little bit slow today. Peter had grown beyond the other disciples. Listen. Growth is the bedrock of change. What is the bedrock of change? Growth. Is it where you, some of you are still saying, uh, and maybe those of you, I celebrate you. If I use your department as example, don't think I mock you. No. Is it where some of you are still struggling with, uh, uh, let's come for drama, the answer you are saying, let's come. There's a level we get to. You will see professors are in the drama department. Also, church, most of the people in the choir, some of them are senators. You see them in the choir, sit down. A senator was his wife was telling me, I'm, I'm a member of the choir at also church. And our choir master is a professor. He will push it to you. If you come one minute late, you will be on your knees. I'm speaking prophetically ahead. Some people may no longer be relevant. And the reason is not because they are hated, but because they are not growing. You know, there was a time we used to have a drama. We used to go and beg him to come and play in church. I don't have time. If they try to correct him, you see, this your style of drumming is too hard. We are buying drum cover every day. He will get, get angry. We don't have choice. We'll beg him again. But it got to a point in our church where some instrumentalists started coming in. They started complaining. This brother is not fit. This brother is not playing according to notes. This brother is not playing according to notes. And I told him, brother, brother, if you don't want to lose your seat, go and begin to learn this thing. Let's go deeper. I have something I, I wrote here that I want you to see. If you are consistently growing, your yesterday's trophy will look like nonsense to you today. Let me come again, I will explain. If you are consistently growing, your yesterday's trophy, the cup you, you celebrated yesterday, will look like nonsense to you today if you are consistently growing. Do you know that there are some things you celebrated yesterday that is no longer relevant today? So, listen, if you are now holding your, on your past record, it means that you are not growing. Ah, Nick if you are growing whatever you celebrated yesterday to you it will look like nonsense today you know that when I go through some of the books I wrote 10 years ago I just used to laugh my knowledge has gone far beyond that I've gone beyond it at times when I listen to some of my yesterday's message that I preach I said I'm not supposed to even say this thing that I said. I've grown beyond it. That's why growth must be constant. You make it part of your life. Don't stay where you are. Continue to improve yourself. 
leaders, I'm talking now, the major aspect of growth I'm talking to you about now, I'm talking about your work with God. Listen. Whenever you are growing, there will be reasons to upgrade in your performance. Our convention doesn't used to be like this before. But because of the time I'm always spending with God, Lord, Lord, He spoke to me about marriage issues. Lord, Lord, He spoke to me about business issues. Lord, Lord, He spoke to me about ministers' conference. Lord, Lord. But see, if you are not growing, you will think you have done well. Then your case will now be like Joshua. Maybe when you are summarizing, when you are saying, I want to hand over the baton to the younger generation. God will say, Oh, Pali, share. Oh, dear, share the laji. You will show it to the Pali. And on the knee, I got you a day. I got a lot of the occasion. I got here, me. Please grow. What does it take to grow? Let me tell you three things before I go to my second point. Three things you need to do to consistently grow. Three things to do to consistently grow. Three Number one, your pastor's message alone is not enough. Can I tell you the truth? He was a pastor already called to buy books. Read books. You know your pastor, I'm a reader. If there's anything I don't know, I'll go and buy the book. I don't have direct access to a lot of these fathers you see up there. But the things I need to know, they have put it in some books. Apart from books, go message, go online, download messages. Because some of you don't you don't listen. The Bible says Jesus sat among what? Among teachers, listening to them and asking them. He sat among teachers, not among teachers, among teachers. Listening to them and asking them questions. I'm talking to you as leaders. You are not members. You are leaders. Have you read John Maxwell? Have you read Rikwanan? Rikwanan. Show me Nigeria. Ilo. Omo jebuni. I'm showing you how to grow spiritually. Do you know Duncan Williams? Have you listened to Duncan Williams before? Say, ah, Duncan Williams, Duncan Williams. So, look only, I'm not best at evangelist school. You need to grow, please. You need to grow because God will not give you an assignment you don't have the maturity to manage. Share the monkey. Your long thing, queen. Share growth new. God does not distribute work based on how long you've been in church. God distributes work based on your level of spiritual maturity. Now that's why some of you are placed in leadership you cannot perform. Because maybe I, 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 we were moved by sight to say, okay, he has been long with us. Put him in charge of that department. But he couldn't perform because he's long been with us, but he's not long been with God. Second thing to do to grow. Create more time for prayer. When I say prayer, I'm not talking about you going from one mountain to another mountain. This one they call prayer. The let's jump. Not, no, I'm talking about you spending time with God alone. 
Now, when you, the more you spend time with God, the more He shows you pictures. He said, Paul, I told you now, we were waiting upon the Lord. At it was in my prayer place, but Sunday, it was in my prayer place that God told me that son, I will give you three children. Write down their names. But he, the only thing is that I didn't know the one for first born, second born, third born. The first name I had, I'm sure I had Eniola. I wrote it down. Lord, give me the names of the remaining two. I didn't hear anything again. And I kept on. Several days in my prayers. Several days in my prayers. When my wife was pregnant of the second born, I was thinking, ah, maybe that boy that God said is coming. I had the Uriola where I was praying. I wrote it down. I thought the second born is going to be a boy. So when she was born, and they told me it's a girl, I went back to God. What shall her name be? That was when God now gave me her name. Uriola, right? I wrote it down. It was in my prayer place. Some of you, you have trained yourself. You have to guide every aspect of your life with prophets. It's wrong. Till will he come back to pray our man? Do I that? And you are a leader. If I see our Lulu Keta, I'm going to come to the Uru Koyen Sile. I was now waiting when the boy came. I just have no have multiple Uru Koyen Sile. Ask my wife. In those days when we were still waiting, if my wife asked me, Oni, Oni. Today's husbands, if your wife asks you, what will you say? I mean, not tell me. I mean, I mean, I mean, Create more time for personal prayer in God's presence. It helps spiritual growth. Sorry, here. I didn't hear you. Then number three, if you must grow, put around yourself. Or can I say you can't put them around yourself because they won't agree to stay around you. Find yourself in the midst of growing believers. I want you to go to the world and go to the world. I want you to 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 go to the world. Don't stay in the in the realm of Christians of your level. And let me tell you, Buruatuma Loma back Christian, lower level, Lombani. They will be killing your faith. Now, let, look at her uh, as Shemilore is now. You know he's speaking well. Let him now, let's say, okay, let's pick three friends for Shemilore. Let's pick um, um number one, Shemilan. Uh, 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 what's the name of this boy again? Uh, Debola two. To be his friend, uh, which other baby do we have here? Yes, this sister that know how to dance. What's your name? Anu, Abi. To to me. Uh -huh. Now lock them inside one room for like a year. You will see that Shemi Lori we we need a speech therapist to be able to speak well. Do you know why? They will drag him to their level. That's what happens when all your friends are those that are junior to you. Not to now talk about you having unbelievers as best friends. And you are a leader. I don't want you to be like Labaos. If you don't grow, there's, there's a level of assignment God can never commit to your care. That's why you need to be working on your Christian life. You need to be working on your spiritual life for spiritual growth. I want to raise, by the grace of God, a church of knowledgeable Christians. That when we talk about principle of faith, you share your experience. I'll share from you. You'll be confirming it. Not that when I'm talking about certain scriptural principles, you are looking at
So whatsoever trophies, look up. Whatsoever trophies you are celebrating that ah, I am a, I have won one thousand souls in the past. That's in the past. If you are growing, you will have upgraded in your assignment. No, uh, my children were asking me a question this morning. When we're coming, and I gave them the answer. That in most of these motivational books, they will tell you that you can never become rich by salary. Abby, is it not true? Is that not what they say? But it's a lie. Now, because of this, so many people are, are deciding to fold their uh, so, uh, tender resignation to their bosses to go and start their own business. And my children said, Daddy, why do you say it's a lie? I said, I will give you examples. Can I give you the example? And I told them, I said, see, if you work under employment and you so much sharpen your skills so well, you will get more than your salary. And I'll give them an example. I said, Rufai, that works with Arise TV. They gave him an award in America. The fearless uh, uh, journalist of the year award. Rufa is still a staff of Arise TV. But Rufa has become a star. He receives more than what others are receiving. Because most people don't understand that starting a business is a calling. Now, I now give them another example of this popular man, Edmond Obilo. You remember him? He was with uh, Splash FM before. People were listening to him in millions. Maybe some people prompted him. He left. But when he left, what happened? He was not the same man that everyone was listening to. Things changed. He had to return. I now said the same thing is with pastoral ministry. If, for instance, as a man school is now, he's a branch pastor and we pay him 50,000 per month. He cannot become rich by that. I now say, if he sharpens himself very well, stay in the presence of God very well, anointing is moving very well, he won't need that 50,000. Because if he minister healing to certain people in his branch, somebody will come, ah, ah I was blind, I was blind, but Evangelist Kule, our pastor in Abelkuta Church, ministered to me my eyes was open i've come for thanksgiving sir sir i came with this car sir and i've paid for a uh, 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 two weeks uh, trip for you in america ah one shot do, do you understand what i'm saying if he sharpens himself so well that people listen to him they are blessed their lives are changing he doesn't need the fifty thousand we are paying him and he does not even need to go and start a church. Do you understand what I'm saying? But see, God cannot commit to you an assignment that, you're, that you do not have the spiritual capacity or stamina to carry. Let somebody grow. Is this time correct? Oh. It means I can't go to my second point. Okay? So a lot of Christians, a lot of leaders are no longer growing. That's why they are exhausted. Because Come and come to my phone. Messages Lukumbe. Now I'm not listening to those messages to preach to you. I am listening to them to grow myself. So if you as a Christian is not growing, you will not be able to fit the assignment. Now look up. I'll give you more examples. Why do you like Pastor Lua himself? Is it because she's my wife? 
Answer now. Tochuku said no. Then why? If she's not a blessing to you in any way, you'll be calling her the way they call pastor's wives in the Orthodox. Yad. 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 <laughs> but she's a blessing she's she's not retaining her 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 position as a pastor's wife because she's just a pastor's wife no she's retaining her position because of her level of fire okay there were one you know she lives inside my house 3 a.m i used to when i open my eyes around 4 or at times 4 30 she has sat down. Amy, my money is she so dear. I will pass over where. But only if you buy yes. Oh, can't live where be pop off that busy no glass in it. And we will leave, huh? And there are young pastors coming up praying, Lord, a wife. Lord, give me a wife. When God wants to give them a wife, He will go to the furnace. He be no, I want to learn no koja. Lati mu wura ye won dan. Go and look at her phone. Two things fill her phone song and messages. I won't tell you the one she listened to. Once you go my empathy, be quick. Once you go, ah. You have to grow. Or else, people will use your assignment to mock you. Have you seen where they say, ah, <laughs> like somebody was saying about one doctor. Are you a doctor? 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 Or you want to do yourself I'm, a, I'm an engineer are you real or fake or it's just a grow that's the same thing i always tell my children don't just be pastor's children grow so that god himself if i give you an assignment that god didn't give you you won't last in that assignment but grow in such a way and I've told you three ways of growth. What's the first one again? Your pastor's message is not enough. Some of you don't read Bible beyond what pastor have taught you. Only open the Bible, open your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 10, you open. After that day, you don't open again. You can't grow. Now, I'm not talking about you doing a church prostitution. You are in, look at two of us. You can never see us. We have never worshipped anywhere. Me, unless I be pastor, he just a killeri. Likewise, my wife. Apart from our pastor, we have two of us have one pastor. That's my mentor. That's the only man that has right to pray for us, or his father, or his father's father. Grow. The church where I was raised, my pastor was an Old Testament preacher. Who like you? We will pray because he said, you know, prayer, prayer, prayer. If you want enough prayer, you know, Magia Mulai Lai Lua, Old Testament. Epa, prayer, go ku tomo tomo. Prayer ku. Ema on prayer yeh. You know, Old Testament. He will pass. He will church some to our raised yeh. He will lua or tell me, go ku to you to you, go ku tomo tomo, go ku toko toko. Go. He will pray yeh. My pastor didn't know anything about New Covenant, New, New, New. Uh, testament but one day let me tell you this story i was summarized now there's no time my pastor so much taught us that jesus is coming so none of us used to walk those days we we're all coming to church so there was this brother in our church the elder brother got a job for him in germany to work with ben's company that they want to train some people into mechanical to becoming mechanical engineers they will now train them for four years in germany bring them back to Lagos and establish an automobile uh, company for them to be repairing Ben's product. So my pastor told him, you must not go. God has called you. And since you have the call of God over your life, 
you cannot travel to Germany to go and learn mechanic. Listen, the mother of the brother came to our church where I was raised and started shouting at the entrance, Chinedu, leave my son alone, release my son, release my son, release my son. So after service, the mother, not even after, the mother entered the service, held his two ears and dragged him. You know, go kill me. You know, go kill me. This is the only opportunity for you to, to be delivered from poverty. You say, you know, go now. Which kind of church you can't come? So they drag him to their to the house. And you know, it is uh, the lieutenant that the general used to send uh, messages of that you come back in the middle of the night. Hey, omo lo la shekini. O yibo eni mo so So my my pastor said, Prince, I said yes, sir. We didn't see. Chukuka in church since when the mother came to take him. Go and check him at home. I'm showing you my liberation. So I got to the house that day. Please, I'm looking for Brother Chukuka. The mother said, Get out, get out. The elder brother was a pastor in Four Square and he was in the sitting room. He said, Who is that, Mama? Mama said, Now nah, Chukuka, people, oh, they don't come, they don't come, they don't come. He said, Tell that young man to call me. So I came in. I sat in front of him. Ah. Pastor Inibili, I don't know wherever you are. He's a medical doctor. May God bless you for me. The man now started speaking from the book of Corinthians. Do you know that all my years, I've never, I had Bible, I never opened Corinthians. Only the Old Testament that my pastor used to lead prayers that we used to read. He was quoting Paul in Corinthians, telling us that Paul was a tent maker. You know, he was quoting the book of Romans. Quoting the book of Galatians, as a boy is looking at me, that's how I was looking at him. The only thing is that me, I open my mouth. You know why I open my mouth? She go go cut on soy. Who are no Bible to allow me? That thing made them to drive me away from that our church. Because I went back to church, I went back home. I started reading Corinthians. I started reading the book of Romans. I started reading Acts of the Apostles, Ephesians. Then I started asking my pastors some questions. Then he gathered all the workers. He said, Brother Prince Will as is possessed. We see that the spirit of error has entered into him. I therefore declare him expelled from this church. Anybody that associates with him, be expelled from the church as well but that was my way to freedom but you know i didn't leave the church too i was still studying my corinthians studying my acts of the apostles my pastor will now come and meet me you didn't go so one day he woke me up in the night please stand up because while i was sleeping in the church with him make a covenant with me that you will not betray me. I wish to call him Baba. Baba, you know this. Ah, why will I betray me? You. You are my boss. You are my pastor. You led me to Christ. He said, No, make a covenant that you will serve me for life. And that time I used to have that wisdom. I don't know where I came from. I said, Sir, where am I going? Where will I go? Will I betray you? <laughs> hey. Sir, nothing will happen. He will go again. I didn't know that he was seeing something. He was looking at me that this boy is growing. See, you will plateau if you are not growing in your work with God. You know what it means to plateau? You will get to a point, you can't go higher again. If you are not growing and you will see younger ones will be giving their life to Christ, but because they are growing, they will now begin to mentor you. Pride will now make you to decide to say, since I'm no longer respected in this place, let me look for another church. Rise up on your feet. Did you learn something at all? You didn't answer me. 
every one of you in the choir, please grow. Get things that will make you improve. All our ushers, grow. You, our leaders, our ministers, grow. One of our small sons in the church asked me a question during the week. He said, sir, listen. And I said to myself, this young man is growing. He said, sir, I observe the difference between Saul and David. I studied it, sir. Saul committed, I mean, David committed more sin than Saul. He said, but I saw that because he does not have a covenant relationship with God, Mm. I said, that's good this was how I started and I started explaining the word of God to him more please grow there is no limit to your growth spiritually there's no point you get to and God will say you have overgrown who knows you may be the next Minister that God is looking for, waiting for, for the end time revival. Who knows? You may be the one that will lead tomorrow in a crusade. The songs that will make the blind eyes to open. Grow! Don't stay at that level that you are in. Yes, you are the one pressing the buttons of the machine. But there may be opportunity that the pastor is not around. The technical team have come to set and the crusade is about to start. What do we do? What do we do? The pastor is not around. And they call it, ah, ah. Brother Tsunji is there. He's a child of God. Tell him to handle the crusade. We are held up in a place where we can't get there before time. Or who is there? Who is there? They say, is it Samuel Lassa? Okay. How many people are, uh, have got into the crusade ground? Sir, over 500,000 people are there. Give her the mic. She knows what to do. Grow! Will you go there and go and faint? See, hey, Maureen, I know, no, no, no. 